Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to see how we're able to take an application and integrate it into a number of LifeRay frameworks. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to be starting off talking about the asset framework. There are a couple of key concepts or key terms that we need to define and discuss as we go through the asset framework. So we've discussed the asset framework before in the content and the LifeRay Fundamentals course, but as a review, the asset framework is a content related framework that allows for us to aggregate all of the different types of content under one umbrella or one name known as an asset. By leveraging the asset framework, there's a number of key features and functionalities that we gain by using the asset framework. Some of those features and functionalities are things like being able to tag and categorize our content, displaying content through the asset publisher, as well as searching for the content as well. So first and foremost, what is an asset? Over in the fundamentals and the content course, the way that I like to explain an asset is simply an umbrella term that encompasses all of the different types of content. So just as things like squares, circles, and triangles are specific types of shapes, so too blogs, web content, and wikis are different types of assets. The way that we look at assets in the back end, on the other hand, is a specific entity that connects or is associated with a specific type of content or again, model entity. With that, it acts like a wrapper and provides some metadata in regards to the content itself. So an asset wrapper object provides some features and functionality for the specific content. In order to display our assets, we need something called an asset renderer. So an asset renderer object is what's used in order to display our assets. The implementing class can be seen here on this slide deck. Now, what is an asset renderer factory? It's basically the factory pattern. So in order to create the asset renderer object, we use an asset renderer factory that creates the object for us. This allows for us to create multiple renderers for an asset type. Let's go ahead and see how all of this ties in together. So let's say we have an asset publisher portlet on the page and it's displaying different types of assets or just different assets. Those different assets have an asset entry that corresponds with it. That asset entry has some metadata within it. And then the asset entry itself is referencing the actual content type. So for each one of these things on the far left, a blog entry, web content, and so on, there will be an asset entry object associated with it. In order to display those specific assets, and in turn that specific content piece, we're gonna need an asset renderer. That asset renderer comes from the asset renderer factory. Uh, so that's all of the pieces working together. We'll take a brief look at what this looks like in the database. Again, typically you don't need to look in the database, but again, this is just more so for your information. So if we look at a specific asset, in this case, the blogs entry, you can see all of the metadata that is associated with it. There are some that's related to the LifeRay instance. As we look towards the middle and the bottom, there's more that's related to the specific asset or content itself. Looking even further, right, this is the asset entry table. Again, a lot of the metadata that we would expect to see from a specific piece of content. If we were to look again at the blog's asset record, this would be the view that we would see. So there's a couple of different aspects that might look familiar, right? The group ID, company ID, we have the title of that specific blog entry in this case. Right. As we go down, we'll see that there is the asset entry that corresponds with the blog entry. So some of the data there lines up the title, the username, company ID, and so on. So there's a lot of different fields that you will see as you go through the asset entry. We're not going to go through every single one. We'll highlight a couple of the key ones. Of course, the class PK is one that's of interest, right? This is the primary key of the specific model entity will have tag names and category IDs, again, associated with uh, the tags and categories that you would create 
over in the content world. So again, if you need a refresher on what tags and categories are and how to use them, feel free to take a look at the content course. Some other fields of interest here, right? A lot of the dates revolving around when the entity was published, created, modified, and so on. And when will it expire? When we're working with assets in the back end, when we're doing things like creating them and so on, these are the two big services that we're going to be looking at, the asset entry local service and the at asset entry service. Looking at those, again, the top one uh, is the local service API. The bottom one is the remote service API. Again, following life rate convention, we're typically going to want to call the remote service to do permission checking. So as we're talking about this, why is this important? Why would we want to use the asset framework? So first and foremost, if we want to display our custom entities through a number of out of the box widgets, this is where the asset framework will really shine, especially when we're using that asset publisher widget. We are able to leverage a lot of the common features of assets, things like tags, categories, the ability to comment on assets as well as relating assets from one to the other. By integrating our entity into the asset framework, we're also able to leverage the search framework as well as the workflow framework. It does take a little bit more, but integrating it into the asset framework is the first step. Along with that, we have the ability to stage our custom entity. So staging again is that sort of preview to be able to work on a site before actually publishing it to the live environment. There's a number of other benefits here, but those are the key ones that I want to be able to highlight. Now, looking at an overview of how to integrate our gradebook application into the asset framework, we start off with the first one. We add the required fields and references to the entity definition. The ones that we're going to be adding specifically are going to be those status fields that you may have saw a couple slides back. Once we have that, we want to manage the asset resources. What that basically will entail is as we're creating our assignment, we're going to be creating that asset entity along with it. Afterwards, we're going to want to create the asset renderer factory. We want our custom entity to be able to be seen. In order to be seen, we need that asset entry. In order to create the asset entry, we need that asset renderer factory. So that's the next step. After we have the factory, we're going to be creating an asset render object that is associated with our custom entity, the assignment. And finally, we're going to implement our JSP files so that we have support for displaying our custom entity within the asset publisher. So with all that being said, that wraps it up for this video, and I will see you in the next video.